British Gas, proud sponsors of the British swimming teams. Hey Manchester, I'm Lisa Leyland. I'm here at the British Gas Swimming Championships 2011. The fifth evening of these British Gas Swimming Championships throws up four medal clashes, four multi-classification finals and a selection of semis. Gold medal winner for the 100 meters butterfly, Ellen Gandhi, will be pitching for the same podium position over the 200. Her qualification time was just one second quicker than Welsh record holder Gemma Lowe. Gandhi, who swims for Beckenham when she's in this country, has shown outstanding form this year and is hot favourite for the crown. It'll be interesting to see how close she can get to her British record of 2 minutes 04.8, set in Sheffield two years ago. Double Commonwealth champion James Goddard faces a demanding busy evening when he defends his 200m individual medley title and will later dig deep into his reserves as he shapes up in the 200m backstroke semi where he is also the holder of the crown. Chasing him hard in the medal final will be Joe Roebuck who clinched silver to Goddard in New Delhi. Looking at the eight finalists, only the two named swimmers have dipped inside two minutes during their career. So if any of the other contenders hope to challenge, they will need to improve mightily on their PBs. To claim a medal spot on the podium in the Blue Ribbon Men's 100m freestyle race, a sub 50 second swim will be the requirement. Defending champion Adam Brown, who's only been in the country three days, has shown no signs of a jet lag legacy with his two 49 second swims in the heats and semi. Get ready for the tear up once the gun has fired and trying to upstage Brown will be the backstroke specialist Liam Tancock and last year's runner up Grant Turner. The multi-classification finals of which there are four will be raced out over 50 and 100 metres butterfly for both men and women. World silver medalist and British record holder Francesca Halsell, not back to her usual sharp form because of ankle surgery, will call on her experience to secure a place in the final. Fastest from the heat is Amy Smith, who posted 55.45 and was runner-up last year to Halsell in the medal clash. Defending champions Stacey Tad and Michael Jameson will be hoping to qualify through their semi-finals and complete the breaststroke double. So the early pace setter here in lane four is Sasha Kindred, multi-gold medal winner and European record holder. He's in the S6 category and it is Kindred in four that's going to touch first. Right alongside him in five is Matthew Walker, European record holder. And now he's going to have to wait and see whether those points are enough. It's a great time by Kindred on 32-2-3 and it gives him 872 points. You must be so pleased about that. Chuffed, yeah. Um, I swam 32-2-6 at the World Champs last year, so I've just, just broken that. So, yeah, I'm happy with that time. So like you said, you did win it here last year as well, didn't you? Yeah, uh, 50 Fly is a, a strong event for me. It's my second best event, so I'm doing really well in it, and hopefully I can do well in the 200 I am tomorrow as well. And we have two different classifications represented here. We have two from the S6 category. They're in lanes three and five. That's Langton and Jones. And in the middle, it's Susanna Rogers of Otter from the S7. It is Rogers here in the middle that's going the stronger here in in the early stages. She is the British record holder for her respective category of S7. Same drill as the previous event. Remember, points will be allotted to the swimmers closest to that world mark. So we'll have to wait for all swimmers to finish as Rogers touches out in 39.01. And I can tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that's a new British record. Natalie, you broke your PB by 100th of a second there. How does that make you feel? Um, even better now that it, I've done it like that, yeah. <laughs> and are you actually looking forward to the IPC European Championships in Berlin? What, what is, your, is that your aim for this year? Yeah, yeah, I've already qualified on the 400 uh, metres on Saturday anyway. So, yeah, that's definitely my main aim this year in, to, you know, get a medal on that. So, 
fingers crossed, you know, I'm looking forward to it. So it's the starts and the turns that could affect the European champion swimming out of lane four. But I tell you what, her pride will drive her on here. She's attacking this with unbridled passion because she definitely wants to make up for the silver in the butterfly. Halsell then at the moment coming into the final five and charging down the pool for the turn. Let's have a look at the split time. Remember, that's where it's going to hurt on the push-off with that ankle problem. 26-4-3, split time for Halsell. Riding charge here at this first semi-final. Jessica Lloyd in lane five is chasing her down and so is Rebecca Turner in three of the city of Sheffield but it's Halsell the European champion in the middle of the pool with that majestic style oh holding off the rest she's going to do enough to go into the final that's been the optimum aim of the exercise coming up to the touch Halsell will finish first she does Halsell's time is 55-8-1 and Amy Smith in lane four comes into this as the quickest qualifier on 55-4-5 she's got a lifetime best of 54-4-8 up to the turn here for the uh, 50 metre split. And it is uh, Smith leading on 26.54, being chased down by Sylvester Nova Centurion in five, and Wilkins in six from Plymouth Leander. Now then, coming up to the 25 metre marker, Smith out to try and beat the time of Halsell, which is 55.81 in semi final number one. 15 metres to go. Good semi this. Still Smith in four, looking good. A real tussle for second between lane three and five. Nobody's going to catch Smith. Smith finishes on 55.40. And I can tell you that Goddard was just 800 shy of the British record split. Now then, can he maintain this kind of standard? 15 to go on the penultimate 50. Pin sharp in the middle of the pool then. Goddard looking for the turn and out to retain the crown and show Roebuck that he can still beat him as he did in New Delhi. 50 to go. Goddard versus Roebuck for the top spot on the podium. Good turn by Roebuck of Loughborough University. Stroke for stroke up to the 25 metre marker. It's still Goddard, the man that's got masterclass here in this IM. 15 to go. Sterling effort by Roebuck in the closing stages, trying to close down Goddard, but Goddard is just about going to hang on to this. It's going to be close on the touch then. Goddard takes it, 158-2-2. Congratulations, that was a huge PB for you as well, wasn't it? Yeah, great swim, really pleased with that. Yeah. A shame not to get all done to beat Jimmy, but you know, it's a great race, good PB, so I can't be too disappointed. And also your second qualification for Shanghai as well? Yeah, definitely. That's uh, that's the main thing here, just uh, get on the team, get on the plane and uh, uh, swim the best when we get out there. <laughs> well, the whole field teeing themselves up for a tilt here at the Blue Ribbon uh, final. The jewel in the crown, the men's 100 metre freestyle. Adam Brown from Hatfield in lane four posted the quickest qualification time on 49.72. Burnett also looking good up in three and Grant Turner going well in lane five. This is going to be a corker of a concluding 50 as they come up to the turn now. And it is Grant Turner, 23-5-2. The Loughborough University British Gas Loughborough ITC swimmer who got the silver medal last year. Trying to upstage Brown here in lane four. Well, 50 metres completed and now through the second 25. Here comes Brown. Chipping away at the advantage that Turner has established. And the defending champion, Brown's going to take it on the touch. It's going to be close, but Brown gets it. 49.41. And she defended your title. You must be really happy about that. Yeah, I'm really happy. Uh, came here hoping to win and uh, trying to get... Uh, I mean, I would have liked to go a bit faster, but it was a good swim and good victory. Rest of the field at the moment having a job to limit the gains that Tad is beginning to put down. So up to the turn and she has increased her advantage. 151.54 then, split time for her now. And it's almost half a second over Bucken of Edinburgh and uh, Marie O'Connor down there in uh, third spot. Going further away, looking good in the middle. Stacey Tad. Fastest eight times, remember, will line up tomorrow on the blocks to contest the medal competition. So make a note of these times. Here comes Tad. Let's have a look what she's going to stop the clock at. Tad then 230.70. Up to the turn. Miley 
trying to hang on to the lead, but she's been deposed of it by Molly Renshaw. So Renshaw has derailed Miley's hopes of winning this second semi. But I think that Miley is trying to do just enough to get to the final and trying to save something for that butterfly final later tonight that she'll be swimming in. So it's all about trying to measure your effort and saving a bit for the next final. And that seems to be exactly what she's doing. So Renshaw in four is going to take semi number two. Let's have a look at the time by Renshaw. 2.31.5.3. Gandhi spins round and starts the retrace. And it's looking good then for gold medal number two of these championships for Ellen Gandhi. Through that 15 metre marker, the challenge still coming from Lowe, who is the Welsh record holder. 25 metres remaining, Ellen Gandhi looking for gold medal number two, 15 metres remaining. Lowe has not given up, but Gandhi seems to have the greater power. Five metres remaining, here comes Gandhi. Gandhi takes the gold medal, Lowe takes silver, and the bronze goes to Dickens. How does it feel to win your second medal? Oh, amazing, I'm so glad that's over, to be honest. <laughs> I was so nervous for it, but um, I'm really happy with the time I went, and I'm so glad I'm um, now going to the Worlds for these two events. Gilchrist still slugging it out here with Willis. Willis getting the better of Gilchrist. Good swim this here by Will Willis of Bracknell. Just uh, 20 years of age, Willis. Got a lifetime best of 2.11.49. And he's going to win semi-final number one. Here he comes. Andrew Willis touches home and stops the clock there on 2.13.89. Webb is still clinging to Jameson's pace. And that certainly will help him very much through into the final tomorrow for the, the lane that he secures. And it is three, four and five that now have established themselves at the head of the contest. Jameson coming up to the touch here. Now then, is he going to be the quickest qualifier for tomorrow? Let's have a look at Jameson's time. 2.13, 2.2. Two, two. No, he's not. Willis on 2.13.09 was faster in semi-final number one. So Welsh record holder and Commonwealth bronze medalist Georgia Davis is swimming here in lane four. And her good underwater work away from the wall gives her a slight advantage as they come through the 25 metre mark. So Davis it is then in that red suit, trying to hold off the challenge of Quigley in lane three, right alongside her. And Emma Saunders in five, but it looks like uh, Davis here in the middle of the pool is going to take this on the touch. Let's have a look at the time. Sta Saunders comes in second, but Davies takes it on 28.67. She seals the gold in the 50 metre backstroke. Congratulations, really tight final there for you. Yeah, um, it's always close in a 50, but I'm just pleased to sort of be getting close to my PBs. Um, I messed up the 100 a little bit, so I'm chuffed that the 50 went a bit better. And that title last year, put Hathaway one place ahead of Pavoni. But it's now Roberto Pavoni that has eased his way into the number one spot. So Roberto Pavoni that'll have brought his Tifosi with him here in the tribunes to support him. He's going to bring the rest of the field home. Here he comes, Pavoni touching out first on 200.89. Good underwater work there by the Commonwealth champion. It's a good contest here for second, isn't it? Lane three looking strong, short, and lane five, Heben. They're in the shake-up for second, but it's all about time, remember. Here comes Goddard, 2.00.46. So we've got four records to monitor here in this particular event, and we are looking for the closest finisher to the respective classification for that world mark. And there are also, remember, four qualifying times as well for those European Championships in Berlin this summer. Good final list, three in line, lanes three, four, and five. That's Ellis in three, Hollis in four, and Wellborn in five. Two different categories represented there, but it's lane four, Hollis that'll take it from the S10 category. Congratulations, David, great swim. Are you happy with that? Uh, yeah, it was all right. It's a decent time, but 
Not quite PB, but it's okay. Second at the far turn there was Millward of the S9 category. And then also from the S9 category, Chloe Buck going strongly over in lane seven. Coming up to the concluding stages now. Rhiannon Henry here, approaching the wall. Let's have a look at the clock here. Is she going to rewrite the record book? Henry stops the clock there on 108.45. Good points tally there for Henry, 894. That'll take some toppling. British Gas, proud sponsors of the British swimming teams.